going live. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for day three of our five day series for world suicide prevention with talk support or talk counseling CIO charity. It is my absolute pleasure to be with you all today. My name is Samira Killenbeck and we have got an amazing session. Oh, I'm so excited. We have an amazing session uh, for you for day three. Before we get underway with the introductions for our fabulous guest speakers, just a bit of a recap for um, the, the previous two days, which was we started our series off with the fabulous Esther Akin George, who was able to share with us her journey with bipolar disorder and what she does to look at really and truly generating and harnessing her mental well being and emotional well being as well. We were then for day two blessed with the presence of the CEO and founder of Talk Support, of whom we are raising funds for. And it was wonderful to hear about the genesis of where Talk Support came from. And also because of his great entrepreneurial background, the advice and golden nuggets that he shared for personal development, self-love and growth for everyone that attended live as well as for the replay. And so we're then moving on to day three, ladies and gentlemen, and it is my pleasure to bring to you two fantastic women. I'm so blessed and privileged to have them as part of my life and circle and to open them up to you. We've got Linda Fodjor, who's based here in the UK with me. Um, she's a nutritionist, fantastic social nutritionist, um, also has a background in health and fitness. And so we're looking forward for Linda to share with us as well about how we can really and truly mix the two of nutrition with fitness to really and truly bolster our mental and emotional well-being. We also have Sharon Lawrence, RDN, LDN with us all the way from America. <laughs> now, Sharon, uh, where are you right now? Is it Florida? Is it Boston? No, it's Florida. Okay, so you're back home in Florida. This is wonderful. This is a transatlantic session that we're having today. And Sharon Lawrence is phenomenal. I mean, with over 40 years of experience, specializing in integrative medicine, health educator. She's a motivational speaker, a fantastic nutritionist, dietitian, and I'm just very blessed to call these ladies friends. So thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. So let's just dive right in. And everybody knows who's been with us since day one. Please pop all of your comments and love in the chat. And also, if you have any questions, uh, make sure that you pop them in the comments in the chat and we'll leave some time at the end to make sure that we can address them as best we can if they um, are not of too much of a personal uh, nature. But ladies, let's kick off. So, of course, this session is all about the importance and the impact of nutrition diet, lifestyle, on our mental health and our mental well-being. And so I want to start off with yourself, Linda, if we can just get from you a, a, a really nice insight into what you think is important for us to bear in mind when it comes to nutrition on our mental and emotional well-being. Oh, thank you very much. That's a lovely introduction there, Samira. Thank you. Yeah, so really, it's understanding that when you look at a car, for example, a car can only move with petrol. And likewise, our body can only function with food. But sometimes it depends on the food choices that we have. Whatever we have is whatever the food has to have in the body. And the food that we eat, it can't argue, it can't say anything, it, it just has to accept whatever it takes. And sometimes you find that taking foods, the wrong foods can have a lock on effect on our body. And sometimes it can have the, the wrong side effects, if you see what I mean. And so it's understanding that when we're together, for example, like Christmas or a celebration, you know, Eid or something like that, we always have food. We have food because it's, it's a, a love language. We, we eat so many different types of foods. The problem is a food becomes a treat, becomes an everyday thing. So where you have it just for the one day because it was a special occasion, you now have it every day. And it's the problem of years of having the wrong foods over time causes problems. 
And so sometimes when we're upset or when we're down, we comfort eat. We eat food because it just makes us feel good. But then afterwards, we don't feel good afterwards. Do you see what I mean? And and when you're stressed out and there's a lot in your mind, the last thing you're thinking about is food, to be honest. You know, you might pick on sugary snacks. You might pick on some, you know, some crisps and some sweets and all those things. And then maybe by the time you look in your cupboards, you don't actually have anything sustainable to eat. So sometimes we have to kind of go backwards and just kind of see what's in our cupboards. What do we really have that's going to give us the sub, give our body the things it really needs? We, we always hear about five a day and all your fruit and your vegetables and all of that. But, you know, we have to actually do it and make it a, a, a love relationship with food. You know, eating foods of color. When you're making the salad, you have ranges of colors. You're not just the greens, you have the reds and the oranges. And it, it makes it more exciting, you know? We have to bring that, when we're in the supermarket, start with the salads first and think, okay, Let's get all the greens and let me, I've got some greens, some cu cu cucumbers, some peppers. I've got red, I've got green. And you go for all the colors, as many as you can get to start building your body up because different vegetables and different fruits have different minerals, different, um, and, and, you, and you need abundance of them all for them to have benefits, to help your immune system, to help all the other body systems in your body and your mind as well. And so get all the salads, start the other way eat vegetables more veg other side forget the rice and the potatoes but have more veg so getting the idea of having as a staple a bun finding local food farms places that you can get lots of um, vegetables cheap and easy you know supermarkets we have here at Lidl's I'm not sure what you have equivalent in Florida is it and um, Walmart's maybe but there's yeah, so many it is or mar uh -huh. local markets where you can get your fruit and vegetables from that it doesn't cost a lot of stuff so you want to be able to make sure you're always infusing stuff you know if you buy a lot put some in the freezer take some out put them in containers but have that as your staple to start the day because every meal needs to have one some some vegetables some fruit and so it becomes a norm when you open your cupboards and you open your fridge and you see oh okay got cauliflower what can I do with cauliflower oh I can actually change it into cauliflower rice you know there are different things that you can do to make it exciting you know you want to be the person that you go into the to the, to the canteen and everyone's kind of looking oh what's she eating what's she got what's she got in her food and, oh well yeah you know I've got some salad here and I've got this and I've got that and so you make it exciting because people talk about food all the time yeah. always talk yeah. about food but when you're upset and when you're down we go the wrong way so it's just trying to flip your energy make you start smiling again having that passion with food so i'll stop there and then we can carry on but that's just a, a little intro anyway <laughs> no this is fabulous that stuff everyone knows that this is round table discussion so feel free my love to carry on but by all <laughs> means Sharon, the same question to you my love as well well, I so agree with Linda because you eat what you have in the house. That's so nice. if there's nothing there that's healthful, then it's carry out Chinese. It is pizza. It is fast food. It is new to nature molecules that really we were not uh, bred or born to eat. Yeah. You know, like Linda said, we'd be munching on something crisp, salty or sweet that might have absolutely no nutritional value. And I also want to reinforce something she said. Every single food has a completely different complement of nutrients. So many of us are stuck on eating the very same food again and again. We eat what we run out of. We put on lists what we run out of. We bring the same food back in the house. And we end up having a very narrow window of the food that we actually eat week after week. You can never get healthy if you eat the same food all the time. Mm -hmm. So one of my greatest, uh, my all time favorite tips is to tell people every week, put one new thing in the family life, in your own diet, in your family's diet that has never been there before. Mm -hmm. Even if it's an ugly fruit or a pomegranate or something you've never had, a rutabaker, when you go to the supermarket, you'll see people putting in their cart food that you don't know. You don't know what it is. Ask them. What is it and what are you going to do with it? And they will be so happy to tell you what they're going to do with their food. People love to share their tips. So expanding the variety of what you do eat is critically important. You'll never get vibrantly healthy 
if you have this limited, narrow choice. And, you know, some of you have stopped eating certain foods or you're afraid to eat a certain food because you remember them from your childhood as just being miserable or having no flavor. Well, maybe it's because you had it as part of the school lunch program and it was prepared terribly. So start again, try the food again, go on Google and find new recipes. There are millions of them out there and start diversifying your diet. That's the first thing. The next thing I wanted to mention is Linda focused and focused and focused on vegetables. And that's because when we talk about mental health, one of the primary nutrients we need is magnesium and it's in the vegetables. You're not gonna get it from meat and many of the other food sources. You're, as she said, you know, kind of even skip the potatoes. We're, we're not looking for those foods to make a primary wall for healthy mental um, focus, healthy mood. We need those green leafy vegetables for that. So the basis of a wide variety of vegetables and legumes like lentils and beans, these things will give you a firm foundation of magnesium to be able to start making mental resilience, to combat depression and anxiety. And we'll, I'll start there. Now I'm going to turf it back. Um, Linda, can you talk a bit about um, food sources of omega-3s? And then I want to talk about it from a supplement standpoint. Yes, standpoint. Of course. Yeah, so really it's trying to have things, salmon, oily fish, things like that, nuts as well. And, you know, sometimes we look at these things and think, oh, I don't think I'm going to like it. But actually, you know, they, they are quite nice. And it's it's how you make it. And, and like Sharon said, it's going on Google, getting these um, tips on where to eat them, what how to make it more appetizing, you know, mm -hmm. and, and really trying to look at other continents as well. Because when you understand how the same food, a salmon is made in one country to a way the salmon is made in another country, it gives you a bit more diversity of how to make it. There are Brilliant. The abundance, of abundance of nuts out there, yeah. you know, your almond, your, you know, there's so many Brazil nuts, there's so many nuts out there. You could mix them all up and just have a, a power pack, you know, so you have a little pack lunch of them because you don't want too much, but you just want a little bit just to give you that oomph a little bit, you know, put them in salads as well. You know, you, you can, you, it's just allowing your taste buds to try something different and allow, and, and as Sharon said, and not to be scared, because we've always had certain things, we always had certain things. And so that means I always buy certain things, but then you're right. scared to, oh, I don't know. I'm not gonna like it, I'm, I'm not, no. Try it out <laughs> until you see it, then you will know for sure. Then you like it, then it's how can I change it? You know, there's so many YouTube videos out there. We you know, we are our own, when we watch all these uh, cookery programs, we go, oh, that looks so easy, you know? Just get the recipes down and just see what are they actually putting in there. And I know another tip that you can do as well is just, you know, understanding if you're making these dishes, like I said, you know, break it down, get get the ingredients. What other things have they got inside of there that I could make myself, you know, and then and then make it that way because you, you will enjoy by before, you know, you're having your two portions of your oily fish every day and you're getting omega free into your body without even thinking that you're doing anything different. You know, it just becomes part of your weekly meal. So that's my my bit there so far. But yeah, so there are supplements as well. If you're someone who's not able to eat or not able to get them in your body, supplementation is a way to help enhance your body, you know, because we all have hectic lives and we all want to do the best for our lives and for our family. And so these help enable and get the maximum nutrients that you need to just so you can be able to be at your best optimum. Because the idea being is that you, you want to function and function well. You don't want to be having headaches and having um, palpitations and, and, and having all these other symptoms and you're not understanding why am I feeling so tired and lethargic. You know, question, any of you who have ever had McDonald's, and I'm going off a bit and I will come back to the question, but <laughs> seriously, whenever you've had McDonald's, it tastes... When you've had it, it does taste nice. You go, oh, okay. But after about 10 minutes, you're still hungry again. You're thinking, did I eat? What did I actually have? I'm still hungry. <laughs> because there was absolutely nothing in there. It's just all enhancements that does nothing for your body. And so yeah. your body thinks it wants it because of the way that it's advertised and what have you. But when you've had it, you think, well, what was the point of that? You know, the money that you spent 
buying your burger. It's about seven pounds, I think, now just for one burger. You could have used those that money to go and buy something else that would have given you a bit more and lasted longer as well. So it's just changing the way the mind thinks and, and just looking at and planning. Because I think the key thing also would be also yeah. in the planning. Because when you're doing your shopping and when you're thinking about what am I going to eat on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? So then you know what foods you're going to buy. And then you just start thinking of what recipes I can do when I have those things in my house. And then you're ready before you know you've got, okay, the after, what I didn't finish on Monday, I can take to work on Tuesday morning, Tuesday for lunch. And then I might have the fish on Wednesday and I might, and you've already started working out what you've got already and it starts making things a little bit more easier. So yeah. That's me for now. <laughs> I mean, this is brilliant stuff, guys. And please, if you do have any questions as we go along, pop them in the chat. But equally, um, we can see Mummy Carmen is on and, and she's saying great advice, ladies. And I completely second that. And before I, I, before I let you come in, Sharon, I just want to say that these women are phenomenal. My, my sisters that are wellness warriors. But I am going to, to say this so that it is 100% clear and it is on tape that nothing that we say when we come from a supplementation perspective, etc., cetera, is, is to diagnose or treat. Must make that clear that we are here as wellness warriors just to make sure that you get the access to the information to look at how we can improve and enhance our mental acuity as well as our emotional well-being. So if you do have questions that, you know, pertain to a particular ailment, um, I'm afraid that we will not be able to, to say specifically that what we're saying will cure it or will treat it. So just wanted to make that clear. Um, but Sharon, my love, please share with us because there are some fantastic supplementation out there, which actually is all about in addition to eating nutritional food. It's not in dead of, right? So if you can right. speak to that, my love. Okay, so I want to piggyback off some of the brilliant tips that Linda gave us. You heard her say oily fish. So let's first expand on what did she mean? She mentioned salmon. She mentioned also nuts. But I, I want to give you the premise first, and that is that your brain is actually made of fat. Now, most people don't realize this. Mm -hmm. And the type of fat that the brain is made of is dictated by what you put in your mouth. So if you need this brain to be able to remember, to task, to focus, to be able to resist depression and phobias, to be resilient against anxiety, then you need a brain that is primarily made of omega-3 fats. And those are the fats that Linda started to explain. So they, they, they spell a name, um, salmon, mackerel, sardines, herring, and tuna. Um, I forget what, what that acronym actually turns out to be, but that's the way I remember them. And that could be big tuna steaks, little sardines in a can. And I know that when I was in the UK, um, I saw lots of varieties of sardines in the can. So you're not limited to just sardines in oil or sardines in tomato sauce. You can have a lot of different choices, but sardines in any form. Salmon, especially not farm-raised, but a deep ocean salmon, making sure to eat the brown tissue that is right beneath the scales, because that's truly where most of the omega is concentrated. Eating salmon, if you're not a mackerel fan, that's fine. Um, Herrings are, are also popular, but if you don't like them, it doesn't matter. The key is to diversify even the type of fat you eat from fish. And if you choose to get omegas from other varieties of nutrients, things like walnuts or flax or chia, remember that those are not EPA and DHA. Those are a different type of omega. Those are ALA. And it's really hard to convert those to the EPA and DHA, which will make the biggest difference in mental resilience, in mood, in emotional um, health. So you can eat those things. They're certainly going to provide additional omegas, 
but you'd need a lot of them. And if there are men that are listening or men that are your brothers or your spouses, please understand that men have a lot of difficulty converting the ALA and Chia or flax into the EPA and DHA. So let's, let's now talk about EPA and DHA. These are the biological omegas that have to come from food. They're essential. Your body can't make them, so you have to take them. And there's a ratio that I use when I'm working in my practice for general health and a different ratio of EPA and DHA when I'm using them for intervention, <clears throat> when I'm using them clinically and trying to create um, another venue other than pharmaceuticals to address mental health issues. So for general health, I, I go with a ballpark of about one and a half grams, three grams total, but one and a half grams of EPA and DHA. So half that amount, 50%, is the, is the really biologically valuable EPA and DHA. And I'm looking for a ratio from supplements of 900 EPA and 600 DHA for just general health. So when Linda was mentioning to prevent headaches, to, to control the heart rate, to make the vessels resilient, mm -hmm. and, and really to support healthy brain function, mm -hmm. general health, 900 EPA, 600 DHA. Mm -hmm. When we're dealing with medical disorders and health challenges, I have to use a higher ratio. I double that to 1,800 EPA and 1,200 DHA. And the nutraceuticals that I use or supplements I use in practice are really concentrated. So in four pills, two for lunch and two for supper, we can get that more therapeutic dosing or one for lunch and one for supper or just two at lunch or two at supper for general health. And I use them in a more concentrated way because many of my patients don't want to be taking 10 lower dose. So the more concentrated, the faster I can get to a therapeutic level with the smallest amount of pills. That's what my, my goal is, just to help my patients remember to take them and to be able to take them. Um, the other thing is that when I use omegas, I always make sure it's with fat because fat absorbs fat. So you would take your omega as supplements with a fatty meal. So with peanut butter, with hummus, with almond butter, with a handful of the magical nuts that Linda alluded to, that great combination of things that, that would give you a variety of nuts all in one handful, or a piece of cheese or whatever it is you're eating that has a little bit of fat, even with a salad. So if you had a salad with olive oil and a great balsamic vinegar or lemon juice, that's enough oil in a, just even a teaspoon for you to be able to absorb the magical, healthful nutrients of omega-3s in a gel cap. Fantastic. Brilliant. I hope everyone's taking notes. I've got my pen. I've got, I've got my pen. I've got my notepad. So forgive me, guys, because this is an education for me. And the thing is, is that this is all about each one reach one. So we really hope that you are taking notes and make sure that you share this whilst you're on this Facebook Live right now. Like, and share it, like and share it so that we can get this information out to the masses because it doesn't have to cost a lot of money to make sure that we are putting our best foot forward when it comes to our health. Mm -hmm which is actually something that I wanted to touch upon and ask you ladies, because obviously, Linda, you're referring to food, um, to Lidl and um, food farms. And then also, Sharon, I know we've got like um, Whole Foods um, out in America, um, as well as other types of uh, grocery stores. But if someone were to say, oh, but you know, it just costs so much money if I'm going to buy things like kale, <laughs> and things like this. What would you say to someone who, particularly in this time where a lot of people have been laid off or they are concerned about their financial situation, what would you recommend that they make sure that they have in their cupboard um, at home when it comes to cooking so that they can actually do this on a budget, um, but they're not doing that detriment of their health? Linda, you start, and then I'll add in. Thank you. Um, it's 
where possible, if you can grow your own health. <laughs> So that was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you don't even need to have a big garden. You, you just need a little flower pot thing, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. on the window. Yeah. And, you you know, onions. If you think of onions and lettuce and things, a lot of things don't necessarily need, you know, it can be done in in London. I mean, obviously, Florida, you've got the sun all over the place. <laughs> but, <laughs> but well, you could be like me and forget to water them and kill oh, them off. Uh, <laughs> but it is, it's, it's also relaxing as well and you allow because you start talking to them and start seeing what happens and and to be able to just when it's come out and spring onion and you can say oh my spring onion is done and it's, it's, it's it starts from there you know and then there's places like we have things like allotments and um uh, food farms here so find your local places where you can pick berries and take the families there and, and go for the for the day because wherever you pick you you pay for the basket i i have to find out actually how much it is i don't think it's quite it's not much but you pay for let's say it's five pounds for the basket and then whatever you pick you take and so you're now the family get involved in trying different things and you're excited because you've picked it all as well and then it is it can be expensive but then also if you think about you know the benefits you know you can get frozen foods frozen mm -hmm. vegetables as well you know they're, they're just as healthy as nutrition as, as something else you know that is grown from the ground the only difference is that they they're grown they're cut and they're frozen so you can get a bag of kale for a pound as well so there's ways mm -hmm. where you can get your foods in but it's just having a different way of looking and, and looking at other things and not just thinking or and also it's not just one shop that you would buy them from as well like I said, there are a range of different supermarkets that can sell the same thing for different prices. Mm -hmm. And so you have to shop around. The markets are there. You, there are so many places that do a pound a bowl for pears, a pound a bowl for tomatoes. You get one pound, you five pounds, you've got at least abundance of pears, apples, or oranges, easily, five pounds easily so it's it's giving yourself more time and more flexibility to try different things and you will by all means find things it makes it more sweeter as well mm -hmm. I, love, I love those ideas i love those ideas <laughs> i want to just say also you know it, if if you could get some small growing pots and put in kale and different vegetables and just get a grow light grow it in your own house then you're picking it fresh. It's going to be so much less expensive. And just stay on top of it. It's a fun thing to do with the kids, too, because then they learn about fresh foods and how they grow. But your idea, Linda, of doing frozen is a wonderful idea also because, you know, when we get food to the market, it does take time. And if they're picked and they're picked in the sun, then they're beating in the sun in the truck on the way to the market. So some of these companies that are picking them in the field and flash, rinsing and flash freezing. You can have even more nutrition in the frozen foods sometimes than you have in your fresh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, it, you know, it's not like you're losing anything when you do frozen these days. It's not like years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is when your base is nutritious, so something like quinoa or brown rice, something other than just wheat or potatoes, then you're getting protein and fiber and other lots of B vitamins and other nutrients and minerals just by the base of the, of the grain that you choose to use. Mm -hmm. And for so many that can't handle gluten, those are great choices. Fantastic. I mean, the thing is, is that many people within um, the UK, particularly within our urban cities, so London, Birmingham, Manchester, um, definitely, as Sharon was saying, because I was thinking, I know of people that are growing their own vegetables on their balconies. Yeah. Uh, and they're able to, they don't have access to a garden, but they're using their balconies. And it's kind of like a greenhouse effect, the cover of the balcony. <laughs> is like a greenhouse and so there it's are great. ways that are, are cost effective so no more excuses anyone you've heard it from these ladies <laughs> no, but <laughs> I, just love, I love the fact that you said you know how do you keep the cost down mm -hmm. this is this is the focus because 
You know, we don't need the burden of excessively expensive groceries to add to the mental burden of everything else we're going through. That's right. So Linda's ideas, my ideas, your idea of the greenhouse balcony, that is just brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's under our control. Mm -hmm. It's something that we can take pride in. And when we're battling depression, we need things that we're proud of. Yeah, I agree. And just to follow on from that, it allows your mind to think about other things other than all the other things that's going on. So it allows, it's a positive energy because you're able to kind of take control of it. You're not, you know, it gives you that space to just to think about something different. And and that's what the mind needs, like a, a shift to, to allow you to be able to appreciate other things and, and, to, and to be happy to do that and not feel, oh, I can't think of that because where I'm, where I'm at. No do those things it, it, it helps your mind it really does it does and this leads me on to a question that i i often get from friends and you know because obviously you ladies know i post a lot on social media about mindfulness and positive energy but what would you ladies say as as advice in a, you know obviously we need to look at our nutritional uh, value that we're inducing and putting into our bodies but i'm also very conscious of the people I have around me um, and what I'm taking into my heart, what I'm taking into my yeah. mind. Um, so what would you ladies recommend as a, as a kind of general um, situation that people could look to to optimize their mindfulness, of course, um, in conjunction with their diet and food? Yeah, so um, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those ones when sometimes we don't necessarily say how we're feeling and people have the perception that everything is okay because we don't really talk about whatever it is and we put this mask on um and so i think we have to be open and real to ourselves that if, if we have close people you know it's good to talk to people it, it's good to you know exercise as well going for walks just sometimes just the fresh air alone just allows your mind to process the day if you're someone who likes running or skipping or anything like that it just allows your mind to take the, the, the stress of the day away um it also and also you know coming home putting the radio on playing some music reading a book allowing your mind to just relax you know and and you know there's times when they'll say what were the 10 good things that happened and what were the 10 you know we, we we concentrate so much on the negativity of oh she said that i used to look like this but and we don't look on the other good things that you've done with all the good that work happened in the week and all the good that someone said you were really helpful. And so sometimes we have to train our minds. We have to try and get the positive out, um, thoughts in our minds. Have the post-its, you know, Sharon, you're amazing today and you're going to be amazing tomorrow. You know, we need to train our minds to 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 be able to, you know, I have post-its all over the house. You know, today is the day that's going to be a good day. And even if it's not, you want to be able to start the day thinking right. You want to think clearly because we have the power to change what we're thinking because we, we go into sometimes of this social... Um, I, I read somewhere that we have women especially can have up to 80,000 thoughts in one day and men have about 30,000 thoughts that just go through their head without even waking up. And so sometimes it's trying to channel the, the positive stuff Mm -hmm. over the negative stuff and, and all the other things that come in the middle. And of course, it's difficult when you're already high stress level. So it's finding activities that make you feel happy, finding things that you like beyond, you know, write five things you like to do. Is it reading? Is it writing? Is it singing? Is it and, and even laughing? You know, find a joke that makes you laugh because you want to find things that allow you to be free. If you're going to start cooking, let's make a pizza. And start with something, put all, you know, lots of, put five different vegetables on your pizza and challenge yourself, you know, bring friends over, you know, go out and meet people because socializing is another thing that we, we like to do. Mm -hmm. And it has been very difficult in lockdown because we haven't been able to be ourselves. And so mm -hmm. we're slowly trying to build that up again and slowly trying to find things that we can do to make ourselves feel good. So it, it's a number of things, not just one thing, I would say. No, absolutely. No, Sharon, anything you want to add? Oh, yours were so brilliant, Linda. You know, hard to top that. Um, let me give you a couple of things that popped in my head while Linda was speaking. Um, so she mentioned exercise, and exercise not just builds up your body physically, 
but it does make for strong mental resilience. It allows you to process when you're doing the exercise and it also lets, lets you distance. So you could either focus while you're exercising on these issues or completely tune them out, get a break from your problems. So that's the first step. The second thing I was thinking about is adequate sleep because when we're stressed and when we're slightly depressed, sleep really is, is hurt, it's hindered. And yet in the deepest uh, stages of sleep is when you rebuild, it's what gives you the resiliency for the next day. So we have to focus on getting into bed, getting to sleep. If you cannot sleep, then we need to add some magnesium right before bed to knock you out. Um, don't go to high doses of melatonin or, or some of the things that I see over the counter before you try just adding more magnesium or a little bit of calcium right before sleep. So get sleep, get into bed, get sleep. Turn the electronic devices down. So a half hour before you go to sleep, not stop looking at your phone and at your iPad and watching TV. Give the mind and the body one half hour space from visual electronics that impinge on the pineal gland and keep it awake. The blue light needs to be off a half hour before bed and out of the room. So no, no blue lights, no, no going to bed with the TV on so that it's literally awakening your pineal gland all night long. So sleep, good eating, which we talked about earlier, exercise, positive thought is huge. I'm so glad both of you brought that up because it's, it's the secret weapon. Um, you will bring about what you think about. And if all you think about all day long is the misery of your life, what is not working, that it, bad relationships, not enough money, terrible job, if you focus on these things all day long, you'll get more of those things. So making the decision that I'm going to find something positive. I love the color of my couch. I love the color of my picture. I love the green grass. I'm so thankful that I see this every day. You, I've, I've heard it called the rampage of appreciation. You look around and all day long you notice things that make you happy. Mm. You will get more of things that make you happy when you notice things that make you happy. Another thought I had is, who do you surround yourself with? Because you become most like the people you surround yourself with. And so if the only people you ever talk to are people that are miserably unhappy, unhealthy, um, just so depressed that they can barely get out of bed, there's no way they can lift you up. If they're angry, if they're hurting and they're lashing out, that's not supportive of you while you're trying to build a healthy, happy life. So make a distance from them temporarily. And, and put in the life, add more of the people that you remember who made you smile, who lifted you up. And if you can't physically see them because of COVID and quarantines, do a Zoom, do a girl's happy hour. And each of you have a drink, whether it's an alcoholic or not, sit and talk and talk about life and get it all out there. But only put in that Zoom the people that you want there. That's right. Don't invite anyone that's going to bring everybody down. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, ladies. We have a question which actually is pertinent to something that you raised, Sharon, which is in terms of magnesium. And we know that that is essential to what we're speaking about and, and generally, actually. But um, our question is, if magnesium helps you sleep, should we stay away from this in the morning? Oh, no, no. We, none of us get enough magnesium. So when I'm working with patients and trying to make them healthy, from every walk of life, I have them do a little bit of magnesium, about 200 milligrams of a magnesium that is not magnesium oxide. Let me clarify that. If you're gonna take a supplement, have about 200 milligrams of any magnesium that is prefer preferentially a glycinate or something you know, of a better nature. Oxide is in the hospitals what we used to use for black and white enema. So do not use the oxide form if you possibly can help it. And so you do magnesium in the morning and magnesium at night. But magnesium is like vitamin C. 
You have to take it to bowel tolerance. That means you have to work your way up. So although I would love to see people taking 400 milligrams in the evenings, I never start them off that high. I start them off with 200 in the evening, 200 in the morning when they first get up to start the day, and then work the, their way up. So if I feel they still need a little more, I may eventually get them up to 400 at night while still keeping them at 200 in the morning. Wonderful. And I mean, the thing is, is that you were mentioning protocols earlier on, my love. So in terms of obviously with different mental challenges, that will therefore then require different types of protocols to follow. So for example, with depression, what would be something that you would look to, to, to see whether or not that would be recommended for a person that, that has depression? Okay, so the first thing I would do is add, I would do what Linda suggested, which is make sure they're eating enough green leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. But if they hate vegetables or they have no way to cook them or they, they're just never going to do it, I would immediately put them on, on anyone on 200 milligrams of magnesium morning and night. And the only ones that I'd really be worried about that is, is somebody that has renal disease where I'm worrying about the magnesium, worrying about minerals. Um, this really, it's, it's kind of hard to get in trouble with magnesium most of the time. Um, they, there will be more people that you're not thinking about and we're not talking about. All the people that take proton pump inhibitors, you know, omeprazole and the drugs like that, because there's no acid in their stomach. So they cannot absorb calcium or magnesium when they eat it in their diets. Wow. Those people tend to be lower. Their bodies are lower in magnesium, mm -hmm. which creates uh, psychological and mood challenges, cardiovascular challenges. So if they're listening and they're not taking magnesium and they are taking those agents, I would hope that they would follow back up with the charity and find out about some of the sources that are available through your charity that would hit their bloodstream in five minutes and help to fix this. Absolutely. And definitely, guys, we will um, come Friday. We're going to have a summary of all of the key points um, and resources that have been raised throughout each day, each series that we're doing throughout the course of the week. But I'll make sure that we do when it comes to the supplementation side, have Good. a special resource um, that you can actually get through uh, Talk Support's charity platform. I'd like to mention something else that we haven't talked about yet, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. Um, when I'm dealing with mental challenges in my patients, any type, and even any disease states, the first thing I like to make sure is that the person is competent in vitamin D status. It's not routinely tested. Uh, I know that it might even be a challenge getting your practitioner to test for vitamin D. And we've been, I've been forgetting, I'm talking to a British audience and not using vitamin instead of vitamin. So forgive me, please. Oh, we've got some Americans on, my love. We've got some Americans on. Okay, good. Well, for the, my, my Brit friends, it's vitamin D I'm worrying about. And it's kind of funny because in the States, um, I, we have a higher threshold as our base for below which you would be considered D deficient than you all do. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why that is, but the, we have different recommendations and, and different uh, associations that make the decisions about what our D competency is between the States and the UK. And I just want you to understand that my recommendations for when someone would be vitamin, vitamin D competent in a blood level versus what another practitioner um, that was regulated in the UK would be permitted to use as a recommendation might be different. I like to see my patients have a much higher vitamin D competency because vitamin D is a master pro-hormone. It governs all of the hormones, all the others. It governs your immune competence, your cardiovascular functioning, your mental health, your inflammatory support. It is basically so critically important. And there in the UK and in most of the states, even in Florida, it's kind of hard to get to vitamin D competence without a supplement. 
In my 45 years in practice, I can count on one hand the amount of people who got to the level of decompetence I wanted without taking a D supplement. So I'm just going to put that out there because I think that a lot of the people that are challenged with pain and inflammation, with bone uh, mineral disorders, with uh, mental health issues, do not have adequate vitamin D. Well, we and know I, that that's an issue for us in this country. Well, it's an issue for us in my country too. And also adding to that, we know with the lockdown, you know, a lot of people haven't been able to go outside exactly. and at least even get the, the, the vitamin D they would have got from outside from the sun. And so you're already indoors, you're indoors for a good period of time yeah. and your, your body is not getting the natural source of vitamin D as well on in a lockdown period and and it just makes your mental health in terms of going out when you're already fearful or you have other other, other anxieties happening is that you're, you're depleting your own vitamin d uh, sources already and that has a um, health um, um, has benefits that has does not have benefits to your health unfortunately so yes people should take the supplements because mm -hmm. really if you're not in a position to be able to get source from food, you need to be able to get that from another form. And that would be as a supplement, you know, that we, they say, you know, you spend about half an hour outside in the maximum point of the sun when it's the hottest part of the day to at least get at least 30 minutes of good sun. But you have to be comfortable to go outside to do that. You have to be in a mindset to say, you know what, I'm gonna go for my walk today. I look fabulous. I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna enjoy myself. <laughs> And just go and just get that little bit of vitamin D, just a little bit of sunshine in and then come back in the house or, or do whatever it is you need to do. But it's starting new new things, new routines that just becomes the norm. And that's where we want people to start being, you know, and, and all those things help mental health. It really, really does. Because if your immune system is on point, then you're going to be in a position where you're stronger, feeling better and able to have more resistance to other things that come your way so true the other the other concept i just wanted to mention is that you know so many of us are worried about skin cancers and melanomas mm. so we slap sunscreen on our faces we put on a dark uh, sunglass mm. and when we put sunscreen on and sunglasses we prevent the body from making vitamin d in our eyes and through our skin so i still want you to wear your dark shades. I'm, I'm pointing to my regular glasses, but you understand, you'll be wearing sunglasses. You, I still do want you to cover your face to prevent aging, to prevent age spots, to prevent skin cancer with a good sunscreen. But if each time you're out, as Linda mentioned, you're out for half an hour, for 15 minutes expose one body part and then put bring your sunscreen with you, cover that piece up. And then, then the next day you go out, 15 minutes of that 30, expose another body part and then put sunscreen back on. Yeah. And that way you're making it from the cholesterol in your skin. Now, where you might run into problems is if you're taking a statin drug and the body's cholesterol is very low. Because if your body's cholesterol is very low, you do not have enough cholesterol under your skin to convert into vitamin D, vitamin D, Therefore, you have to take a vitamin D every day in addition to whatever sun exposure that you decide to get. And with, with the um, omegas that we've discussed, the vitamin D, I also know of the importance of B vitamins. Yes, I, yes, we have to talk about that. So, yeah, please do, my love. Please go ahead. Okay, Linda, why don't you talk a little bit about the B vitamins for food? And I'll mention how I pick supplements. Okay, no problem. So vitamin B is a supplement. So vitamin vitamin B is a vitamin that the body needs in terms of cell development. And we can get a lot of this vitamin B when we don't even realize, but it can come from even things like egg yolk. It can come from things like um, having, um, they, they say even poultry, chicken, uh, 
even lentils as well, vitamin B is there. But you, you, the idea being of a source of vegetables, dark green leaves as well will have vitamin B in them. Um, so it's really just trying to make sure that your body is in a position to get as much of that. I mentioned the salmon before. I mentioned uh, chicken. Um, and, and so it's over the period of the, the week you're giving yourself a chance to be able to get all those vitamins into your body. So you'll get vitamin B, get vitamin C, get vitamin D as well. Um, eating things like, um, we've got vitamin D, salmon, uh, f some foods are fortified with vitamin D. Um, when you're having your breakfast, they, they put vitamin D in there. We know vitamin C is abundance of your fruit and your vegetables, various peppers, uh, various um, different colours, always going for different colours as well is the secret. But B6, um, B, all the, all the um, amino acid type uh, vitamins are brilliant for cell development and we need to be able to have abundance of vegetables and fruit mainly are the ones. But if, you're, if, you, can like, if you like seafood and things like that, by all means, try them as well. I want to add that the grains are a great source of B vitamins. Mm -hmm. And um, if, although many of us are avoiding gluten and some of those grains because we're sensitive and it's a huge percentage of the population, um, the, what, the beautiful part of the way vitamin B comes in nature is as a complex. It comes with beautiful ratios of one B vitamin to another. And so I'd like to draw your attention to that because sometimes when we go out and purchase a B vitamin because we're lethargic, we're tired, we're exhausted, we are run down and we're trying to pick ourselves up, we buy what would be called a, a stress vitamin and they'll put um, B1, B2, B6, B9, they'll put all the Bs and they'll put them at the same number, 50 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 50 milligrams, or 100, 100, 100. That is not how Bs come in nature. Mm. They, they should absolutely be in the correct ratios or do not take them. Do not take excessive B6 by itself, mm. B12 by itself, unless you're vegan and need to be supporting with B12. But even then, I would have you do a B-complex because you probably might have out of ratio some of the others and it can't hurt to get an extra B-good B-complex in there. Um, the final thought I have on this is that when you take B supplements, most of the time the manufacturers are cheap and they'll place three of the most critical B of the B-complex into that supplement in a form that is primitive, inorganic, um, and not easily used by the body. The three I'd like to really bring your attention to, because this is how I dose my bees. I make sure my complexes always have B6 that is coming from um, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, P5-phosphate, not pyridoxy, pyridoxal hydrochloride. That is a primitive old version of B6. I like my folate to come from a methylated version. And that is because a good percentage of the population, um, we're talking to the people in the UK and the people in the States, it could be as much as 30 to 40% of the population can't put a methyl or methylate their bees. So if they're taking folic acid in the wrong form, they're not going to use it well. So I like, I like the folate to be um, methylated already. It's, it's a, a specialized version. Um, Merck makes it as a drug called metfolin, but you can also get bees in the best complexes methylated already as an MTHFR version. Um, and, and you'll see the way it's spelled out. It will not say folate. It'll say methyl tetrahydrofolic acid. And then the last piece is the B12 that's in most of the B complexes and even by itself is generally inexpensive, cheap B12. It's cyanocobalamin. And that, again, is not as useful as its methylated cousin, methylcobalamin. So when you're on Friday looking at the best sources of supplements that I know the 
Um, this charity is trying to provide for any of the people that need it and any of the people's friends or relatives that need it. Um, I know that the B Complex that I use in practice is on there. So I am really hoping that Samara will highlight that um, and showcase the nutrients that will really make a difference. Because what is interesting about the particular supplement I'm thinking about is it's a powder that when mixed with water hits the bloodstream in five minutes. And you really do feel a difference. My favorite time to take a B vitamin, a vitamin, <laughs> is generally between 2 or 2.30 p.m. And that is because for most of us that are awake during the day and asleep during the night, our serotonin drops around 1.30, 2.30, depending on what time you wake up. So if you're up really, really early, then around 1.30, you're starting to drop. If you're up around 6 or 7 or 8 or 9, it's dropping between 2 and 2.30. And when it drops, you feel even more anxious, more depressed. You wish you had a cup of coffee and a sweet to pick you back up. What you really need is B-complex to pick you back up, not another cup of coffee. So the best B vitamins at that time that will hit your bloodstream in five minutes will make all the difference in the world for you. Absolutely. You guys are giving me homework. <laughs> this no. is bad. This is fabulous. I mean, we've only got a couple more minutes, ladies, but the importance of antioxidants. What would you say with regards to um, clarity of mind, focus, protecting our immune system and, and looking at things like anxiety? What would you say in terms of antioxidants that we should be looking to to, to again enhance all of these things? Yeah. Linda, do you want to give it a try? Yeah, go on. I mean, it's the same kind of message, really, that it is the, the, the secret of the fruit and the vegetables law. It is it's that it is as simple as that. It is really understanding that we need to have a range of fruit, a yeah. range of vegetables, a range of colours, because the reason why we say that is because it has the added benefit of the antioxidants. It has the benefits to be able to enhance because every every part of our body is a cell. And so in order, I, I always I always picture the immune system like um, an army. That's how my, I try and interpret it to people. And I mm -hmm. envision it like a, a group of men with, an, with um, holding and they're trying to protect the organs behind them. And so the defense in front is your antioxidant system that is preventing things going in is the protecting the cell from foreign bodies, from pathogens. And so the invasions of other things coming in and that can only be as strong as the force around it. It can only be good if you have fruit and vegetables. And so the reason why we say you need to have lots of fruit and vegetables because it helps your antioxidants, it helps build the cells, it helps keep you strong. So that's really why we go on and on and on is because that's the main reason we want you to take them is because of the benefits it has when you have it. Exactly. And, that's <laughs> and, and to add to that, if you need a simple way of knowing which are the strongest antioxidants, this is going to piggyback on what Linda just said. It's in the colors in the food. So if you could imagine walking through the supermarket and if you could cut or crush like Arnold Schwarzenegger, the kind of strong Arnold. If you could cut or crush a food in the folds of a white paper towel and open that food and see a pigment that bled into the paper towel, the more pigmented the food, the deeper the color, the more antioxidant is in there. So the deepest greens, the deepest mustard yellows and oranges, reds and browns and purples and blues and greens, the better the food. And that means that normally white food doesn't really have antioxidants. So if you have a choice of picking a white small onion versus a yellow or a red, always pick the yellow or red because of quercetin, because of magical antioxidants that are in the yellow and the red, not the white. So for 25, 25 pence more, you would get a big difference. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Love it. Ladies, before we finish up this fantastic segment, 
Um, I would like to switch your attention, if I may, to um, the cause that has brought us together, which is for World Suicide Prevention Month, but also we've got World Suicide Prevention Day happening this Friday. Now, when it comes to prevention, I think everything that we have shared, well, actually you ladies have shared, um, has been absolutely on the money. The organization uh, Talk Support, um, the registered name is Talk Counseling CIO. They actually provide everything you can think of from a service perspective to help anyone in the community nationwide. So at the moment, that's UK based with their mental health and emotional well being needs, whether that's through coaching, therapies, and other community initiatives. From your own personal perspective, why would you think it important for anyone that's listening right now or anyone that listens to the replay to support in any which way that they can, whether it's through spreading the word, donating um, to the organization, volunteering for the organization? Why in your own words would you say it's important to align yourself with an organization like this? Um, I think it's important because there are so many people that we know or we think we know but we don't really know what's really going on and and sometimes it's the people that we are close to and we don't even know how come this person has committed suicide why could they be, do and we don't even know we don't even know the triggers or, or or there's any sign to say there was a change and so an organization like this will allow people to know that you know there are a lot of people normal people everyday person that may be suffering from something and but don't know how to go about helping or getting that help or can't go to their family or can't speak to this person and they are suffering and, and they just need somewhere to go and, and know that they're okay and to be able to know that they're not the only person as well and that there's light at the other side. You know, I strongly believe that we are all here for purpose and a plan. All of us have our own unique different gifts that makes us different we all have different DNA that makes us already different because our DNA print is different. But sometimes things happen in life that allows us, it gets clouded and allows us not to see where we're going and see and get the potential where we're supposed to be. And so an organization like this will help people get them back to where they need to be, get them to a place where they can be themselves again and feel like themselves again. So I think it's very important not taken lightly at all. It is extremely important. It's a silent killer because there are, there are no indications because we don't know what's going on because it's all behind closed doors and we need to help people. We, we we're, 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 Life is too precious. It, well, there's so much more that there is, but we have to give people the chance to be able to heal from this. Really, we do. Absolutely. Um, my my only take, other than that beautiful explanation uh, that Linda just gave, is would be that that people need that helping hand. Depression, anxiety are at an all time high. We have had more thrown at us in the last year and a half than any time in our lifetimes because you we added that on top of our already fragile lives. We were already stressed. We were already worried about money. We were already, we were already worried about relationships long before COVID hit. And those burdens just added to the other burdens, um, isolating us more, as you mentioned earlier, Linda, um, making us even more fragile. So I think an organization like this that lets us catch people before they hit the last phase and are make, thinking about suicide, that helps us build walls around people early and lets them understand that, no, they're not alone. Everybody goes through this periodically, yeah. but some people move through it faster. And since we don't know when anyone, like Linda said, we don't know where anyone is at, just making people aware of this fantastic organization, the amazing work they're doing, and knowing that we can all be a part in some way is just so great. Thank you for inviting me and, and inviting Linda to speak with you today, Sam. We're very appreciative. We wanted to add our, our part. Mm. <laughs> oh, ladies. 
thank you ever so much. I, I don't want to cry, but um, I'm so grateful to you for this time. I know you're so busy, so thank you for taking time out of your super busy schedules to share with us. Please, guys, pop your love in the chat for Linda and for Sharon. They have given amazing advice and just shared from their hearts so that we can actually continue on with the mission of ensuring that everybody can get access to the connections they need, the support system that they need so that they can be on their journey to getting that mental health underway as well as that emotional well-being. So for anyone that wants to actually volunteer and or to share the information with anyone that is struggling with their mental health, then the telephone number for Talk Support 0203 You can also go to the website, which is www talksupport.uk and we've got all kinds of resources that are available to you for free so that no one has to be alone. So remember also that we do have our raffle that is taking place. So everybody make sure that you get your tickets. You've got to be in it to win it. It's five pounds, which is about seven US dollars. We've already had donations in from the United States, from Australia. So please, everybody make sure that at least you get one ticket because that one ticket can definitely help to save a life. And so I'll make sure that I pop the link um, for everybody attached to this recording. Every single penny and pound that is raised is going 100% to talk support and the great works that they're doing up and down the country, by the way. Um, and so I just want you to know it's 100%. It's not 10%. It's not 50. It is 100% of that funds that are raised going towards the works that they do and the raffle prize is a pamper day for two plus a self hamper bundle self-care hamper bundle so it's all to play for thank you so much ladies have a wonderful rest of your week and good night god bless take care everybody and we'll see you back at the same time tomorrow for our fourth in the series of five Thank you so much, ladies. Bye now. Take care. Take, Take care, care, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>